gang members. How the fuck? Ah! It's your day, go make sure you're going to another goddamn video, man. Hello, gang members, man. I look, man. Look, man. Look, man. Before we jump into this video, I wanted to talk to you guys real quick. I want you guys to know that lately these videos I've been putting out are actually streams that I do on Twitch and I react to videos on Twitch, then chop them up after and put them online. But hey, I'm, I can't lie to you guys, man. I can, I can definitely use some followers on Twitch, you know what I'm saying? So please, if you really fuck with a boy, go on twitch.tv slash react and just hit the follow button, all right? I'm trying to get just 50 followers. I think I got eight followers on Twitch right now. Just get to 50. And every night I, I, I stream on Twitch, and the next morning or the next day, I, I don't know if it's the same with wherever you are, but the next day I download those videos and I chop them up and put them on YouTube. So, yeah, if you're also watching this and you're new to YouTube or you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel also. We get lit over here. I right? subscribe, like, share, tell a friend, and tell a friend. And yeah. Let's have fun with it, I'll say. Also, don't forget to check out the merchandise, all right? Teespring.com backslash KingNamy, or you can go to KingNamy.com and check out, you can check out my music, my music videos. Also, we have merchandise on the website. All right, the website is still under construction. I'm still learning how to properly design the website. So, I'm doing it little by little. But yeah, we're going to get them, man. Just, you guys just show some support, all right? Just show me that you're really enjoying the reactions. And go in the comments, tell me some songs to check out. Every day, I try to do at least 10 songs. So, that's 10 videos every day. So, come on, man. That, that deserves a follow. That that definitely deserves a follow and a subscribe. I love you guys so much, man. Let's get it. Geography now, France. Let's see what it's talking about, huh? I've done geography now, Georgia. I've done. This is my second one I'm doing. I think I'm gonna start doing a lot more of these videos and like checking out more uh, rap songs from other country. But now, in the meantime, man, France. You guys go in the comments and tell me some French songs to check out, man. Some new French songs that I've missed out on. I know some some people have dropped. Oh wait, also wait. First of all, I'm sorry. There's this show coming out on Netflix uh, about Niska, SCH, and uh, what's her name? They're judges to like this show. Like, will you guys want me to react to stuff like that? Cause I really want to watch. It. You know what? I think I should react to it. But definitely, I'm looking forward to the, that show dropping. But hey, let's give this a shot. Let's see what France is talking about. I never Certains understood like, a lot about France. Huitième des mois est français. J'ai donc en quelque sorte une obligation de honorer mon héritage. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. Ah, France. Pretty much everybody on the planet has heard of this place. I mean, immediately images of wine, cafes, embellished 18th century Baroque architecture, and people who really hate globalization of the English language. But take a step back even further, and France becomes a place with jaguars, coconuts, volcanoes, penguins, really? grass skirts, war dances, bamboo flutes, witch doctors, and a multifaceted history that has evolved into a people group into becoming one of the most notable nations on the planet. Alors, the first thing you need to know about France is that it's not just European, but a transcontinental country that spans across 12 time zones, more than any other country in the world. Mais comment est-ce que possible? Laissez-moi expliquer, croissant. France is kind of divided into two main parts. The European metropolitan France, where about 95% of the population lives, and the overseas French regions, departments, and territories, otherwise known as the Département et Territoires d'Outre-mer, or Dom Tom. Before we tell you what Dom they are, Tom. let's explain the difference between them. Regions have exactly the same legal status as mainland France and the same civil, penal code, and administrative social tax laws. However, they can be slightly adapted to suit the region's particular needs. In collectivities, the autonomy rises and they are empowered to make their own laws except in certain areas like defense, currency, trade, and diplomacy. The overseas regions are Guadeloupe and Martinique in the Caribbean, French Guyana yeah, nah. in South America, which by the way has the Kuro Space Center disputably the best in the world because it adds an extra gravitational slingshot effect because it's so close to the equator of the Earth, and Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of East Africa. Well, damn, the overseas collectivities are French Wait, what's the Earth last one? And Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of East Africa. The overseas wow. collectivities so there's like, are French there's different places. You've heard of Tahiti. That's I never Polynesia, knew that. That is so Wallace interesting. In the Pacific, Saint Pierre and Miquelon, right off the coast of Canada, Saint Barlemy and Saint Martin, which is the only place in France that has a border with the Netherlands, as the Dutch own the southern part of the island, located all in the Caribbean. The only islands that lie under the title of overseas territories are the French Southern and Antarctic Islands, or the TAAF. These islands are made up of the Kerouac islands, well, St. Paul and Amsterdam islands, you can probably guess who used to own those, the Crozet islands, and Adeliland, the claimed slice of Antarctica that is technically not recognized thanks to the Antarctic Treaty. And as of 2007, the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean, remember the Comoros episode, were added to make the fifth district of the territory, even though half of them are disputed with Comoros, Seychelles, and Mauritius. These islands are mostly uninhabited and only house 
as temporary military or scientific personnel. Finally, France administers two special territories that don't quite fall into any of the previously mentioned categories. There's the uninhabited Clipperton Island off the coast of Mexico, which has a crazy what? murder story. What? Why is France it. spread out like that? Least, there's New Caledonia, which has a special particular status out of the French administered overseas territories. New Caledonia is the only one that's vying for a kind of somewhat independence as the political power was passed to the native Kanak peoples. There is a weird dual French EU and New Caledonian citizenship thing going on. And in 2018, they will hold a referendum to either remain or leave France. And thanks to all these territories, they together give France the I second I still a part of France. economic zone in the world after the Keep US. Okay, now, Wait, the second what? largest executive economic zone in the world after the US. Whew. Okay, now let's go back to metropolitan Europe, France. The country is located in Western Europe, bordered by eight other nation states. Don't forget little Andorra and Monaco. Along the coast by the English Channel and the Bay of Biscay in the north and <clears throat> west, as well as the Mediterranean Sea to the south. Mainland France is sometimes referred to as the hexagon, since if you tilt your head a little bit, it kind of looks yeah. like it has six sides. Quite frankly, I was always under the impression that it kind of looked like a teapot with feet. Mainland France is also divided into 13 regions, including Corsica Island, 18 altogether if you include the overseas regions, with the capital, largest city, as well as the main cultural and commercial center, Paris. We could talk on and on about Paris, what with the unbelievably designed metropolitan layout, the rich Damn, vibe. Damn, look at how on sick on that Paris, shit what is. The what the fuck? That is beautiful. That is fucking dope. Unbelievably designed metropolitan layout, the rich, vibrant atmosphere, the juxtaposition of classically adorned historical sites along neo-contemporary architecture, the food, the shops, and of course, Au soleil, sous la pluie, à midi, au à minuit, il y a tout ce que vous voulez, aux champs Elysees. But that in itself would take too long, and we gotta get through three more segments. The busiest airports are the about? two Paris twins, Charles de Gaulle and Orly International, as well as Nice, Côte d'Azur, and the second and third largest cities, Lyon Saint-Exupéry yeah. and Marseille Provence yeah. International. At around 643,000 square kilometers, France is the largest country in the EU. The interesting thing about France is that it's kind of divided into areas that historically had their own distinct cultural identity. Some of the most notable ones being Occitania, Savoy, Brittany, Normandy, Alsace, Brittany, a section of the Basque country. country, Nice, and the island of Corsica, which speaks its own dialect most French people can't even understand. These regions contribute their own unique piece of the French pie. Speaking of pie, we all know about French food, which is great because we're going to discuss more about it in... If you look at France's physical makeup, you start to kind of understand why food plays such a huge role in their culture. Everything just kind of works out perfectly for them. For metropolitan France, big, rich, nourishing rivers and their tributaries like the Garonne, Dordogne, Loire, Seine, Meuse, and Rhône tangle the entire country <laughs> north to south, east to west, allowing an abundance of irrigated crop fields to exist in nearly every corner of the country. Now add on top of that the fact that the country does not have any major fault lines. Oh, they enjoy beautiful. a nice oceanic European climate and they don't suffer regularly from any major natural catastrophes. Most of the country is made up of arable flat plains or small rolling green hills that are just begging for cultivation and voila you have an agricultural gold mine in fact out of every country in the eu france reportedly has the highest quality of soil performance and resilience and only a few spots like in the caucasus region and parts of eastern europe and southern russia rank higher so there you go food haven in the south you reach the That's mountainous regions of france including the pyrenees along the border with spain the massif central plateaus one of the most geologically studied places in europe due to this strange formation the alps all along the borders with Italy and Switzerland. By the way, Switzerland was all like, yeah, I'm not gonna share Lake Le Mans. It's mine. And that's how Geneva was born. The highest point in France, let alone all I'm of dead. the EU, is Mont Blanc, found in the French Alps along the border with Italy, only second in height to the Caucasus Mountains in so all Italy is close to France. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Europe. Some people don't, but that's just, that's another story. France is a cornucopia of produce, dairy, and meat. Every region has their own specialty, but two things are everywhere, cheese and wine. The French are the largest consumers of cheese with over 1,200. You know what? else is georgia like literally georgia also is cheese and wine different varieties found all over the country the french also have a larger range of unconventionally consumed meat products most countries stick with beef chicken pork maybe lamb or goat and fish however the french aren't satisfied with just that other animals like pheasant duck goose quail rabbit venison veal rabbit horse, dogs, and horse? are consumed regularly speaking of which the national animal is rooster snail which snail is snail why snail. you might typically see a lot of roosters on french affiliated symbols but wait 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 let's not ignore the fact that you guys eat horse what how does that taste 
Somebody let me know. Quail, rabbit, venison, veal, horse, frogs, venison. and snails are consumed regularly. Speaking of which, the national animal is the Gallic rooster, which is why you might typically see a lot of roosters on French affiliated <laughs> symbols. In fact, France is one of the most entomophagous, that's insect eating, countries in Europe, as about 700 million snails are estimated to be consumed every year by the French, especially in Burgundy. Snail is good. I, I don't blame y'all. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the French good. are the highest consumers of raw or mildly cooked red meats, a huge portion of the population is either exposed or chronically infected by the Taxoplasma gondii parasite that disputably over half of the population is suspected to have. This little guy eventually finds its way into your brain, changes people's behaviors into being either more caring or aggressive and suspicious. Look it up, I'm not even joking. The Alps are famous <laughs> for their charcuterie and fondue, Brittany for its crepes, Cantal for its chestnuts, Dijon for its mustard, La Veyron for Aligo, Rheim for its champagne, and then the we get mustard. to Bordeaux. Now, first of all, every region of France likes to claim that they have the best wine. However, it's widely known that Bordeaux is disputably the home of the largest wine vineyards in the world, pumping out over half a billion liters of wine a year. The French take their produce maintenance very seriously and became the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food since February of 2016. All businesses must donate wastage to either charities or food banks. To combat crop wastage on farms, France has even opened up ugly fruit or vegetable shops in which you can buy disfigured produce for 30% off. Other than food oh, stuff, wow. though, other than food stuff, though, main exports are aircraft, chemicals, machinery, iron, aircraft. and steel, electronics, motor vehicles and pharmaceuticals. Of course, the overseas territories and regions also have climates and topographies that are completely different. The Caribbean islands and Guyana enjoy a warm Caribbean tropical climate. Guyana, Guyana. the Amazon having one of the highest forest cover densities in the world at over 95% with over 1,100 species of birds and reptiles and mammals found in it. Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of Africa have deep jungle ravines and a common volcanic activity going on. The scattered islands are mostly uninhabited sandbanks and lagoons with nothing more than just a few trees and shrubs. The southern Antarctic islands are rocky and desolate with few grasses and vegetation. Kerwellen has these cabbage looking things going on. And these islands typically freeze over in the winter with penguins stampeding off the coasts. New Caledonia and French Polynesia are tropical Pacific islands that enjoy an abundance of rich, unspoiled, thick jungle brush and colorful flowers. And of course, hmm. Adelie Land is like all ice and Antarctica. All right, we've discussed borders, boundaries, mountains, food, volcanoes. Now let's talk about who's running the entire show. <laughs> France is a country of people that are very, very intent on making sure that you know they are French. First of all, the country has about 67 I'm million good. people and is the second largest in Europe after Germany, making 13% of the EU alone. About 85% of the population is white, 10% are North African, mostly from the Maghreb regions, a little over 3% are black, and a little less than 2% are Asian. The currency is a euro, they use the type CEF outlets, and they drive them oh, wow. the road, which makes things interesting when their neighbors from the UK come across the channel. Now let's talk about the white people. <laughs> Most white White French people have some or partial Celtic or Gaulish origins as historically the Gauls inhabited most of the centralized regions of modern day France. That means genetically, the French and British have a lot more in common than they think. Of course, an admixture of Latin and Germanic roots also applies as all three people groups have their stake of claim in France as well. The name France even came from the Germanic Frank tribe. French is of course the official language. However, regional dialects do exist, but for the most part, they do pretty well at making sure everyone speaks it. Granted, the linguistic zones that we mentioned before each have their own flag, still cling on to their mother tongue, and sometimes you can even find street signs written in these languages. For example, Breton, a Celtic-based language related to Welsh and Irish found in Brittany, Basque in the Basque country, Occitan in Occitania. Corsicans have like this strange half French, half Italian hybrid thing going on. Mm. Keep in mind though, most of the languages spoken in the linguistic zones are kind of dying out, and only the older generation really retains daily conversation in those languages. Outside so of metropolitan France, the French. overseas departments and territories each speak French, but in addition typically have their own creoles or dialects. For example, in the Caribbean, Martinique and Guadeloupe might say Sacamache, tu bon man, Timal man. In Reunion or Mayotte, they might say Coiffe, comment il est, à où? France is the most visited country in the world as more people than the entire population of France visit France annually at about 80 million. Culture wise, That's there is too much to discuss. I mean, we are talking millennia of <sighs> tribes, wars, empires, heroes, villains, artists, poets, architects, kings, queens, guillotines, revolutions, inventions, music, dance, clothing, fashion, cinema, cuisine, discoveries, victories losses, folklore, science, literature, amazing. medicine, and baguettes. To cover it all, we would need a whole separate YouTube channel. But for what it's worth, since the Middle Ages, France has been able to show time after time again that it has been a global force to be reckoned with. I mean, the French at one point in time had the second largest empire in the world, spanning Damn. across virtually every region on every continent. One thing you have to understand is that in a fast-growing, anglophone-driven global economy... And is Macron the president of all the regions? Or is he only just the central France 
You guys let me know in the comments. France is very, very firmly intent on preserving the French language and culture. The governmentally sanctioned Académie Française has aimed at doing this since yeah, 1634. They something. do things I'm, like, things. somewhat unsuccessfully, banning foreign words such as blog, hashtag, parking, email, and weekend. In addition, the French media's top regulators, the, the CSA and CNC, have strictly enforced policies that require all music on private radio to be at least of 40% French origin and 70% in the French language between the hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and half the music quota must be less than six months old. Everything must be fuck? French. France is of course home to a I'm... plethora of notable figures in every field of academia and athleticism. I mean, they have almost 70 Nobel Peace Prize winners, including famous chemists Pierre and Marie Curie. Few people know that they had a daughter who also became a notable scientist. Other <laughs> scientists, writers, and philosophers like Descartes, Pascal, Baudelaire, Flaubert, Pasteur, Châtelet, Bouton, who by the way invented the metric system. Musicians like Ramelot, Lully, Debussy, Jacques Brel, Edith Piaf. Of course, we can't forget the fashion icons Louis Vuitton, Coco Chanel, oh, and wow. Christine Duart. I mean, it's no secret, France is Duart. often touted as the fashion capital of the world. Artists like Monet, Cezanne, Renoir, Degas, Manet, and Gauguin. And of course, what's an episode about France without mentioning anything about kings Louis XIV and XVI, Joan of Arc, and Napoleon? In a simple way of putting it, French culture is very vibrant and proud. The French love where they've come from and how they go about doing things. The Catholic Church once played a major role, and to this day, even as a secular state with dwindling church attendees, Many French people still, in the very least, identify nominally as Catholic, mostly for a cultural thing. It's just their history and they don't want to toss it away. They also love True. taking breaks and getting their sleep. On average, the French get about 8.83 hours of sleep every day, more than any ah, other country damn. in the developed world. And they also have some of the shortest work weeks with only about six to seven hours on average a day. And that's enough for them. It's not uncommon to see people taking time off in the middle of the day, early evening, just to relax and take a nap. They even have a word for it, l'heure de la parole, which literally huh. translates to the hour of the Aperitif. People can also claim state pension at age 62, making it one of the lowest retirement ages in the world. And of course, oh, the sport whoa. French people rank highest in the world going on strike. I mean, the last thing you want to do is interrupt a Frenchman's nap during a six hour shift with corporate policy changes. Yep, the world could be a cruel, cruel place. Let's see how France survives in the jungle. When it comes to France, they don't discriminate. They hate everyone equally. No, but seriously, <laughs> France has their eyes on a few people, and when they see what they like, they cling on and make you a treasure. First of all, Francophone nations and Latin-based former Roman legacy nations generally get the high seats, especially their neighbors like Switzerland, Luxembourg, Italy, and Spain. Quebec, Canada is to France kind of like what the USA is to the UK. They adore each other, they love each other's accents, but they love making fun of each other even more, even though they are <laughs> really close. Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia are the closest African nations as they make up the largest African immigrant demographics, followed by Sub-Saharan African countries like Cameroon and Côte d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast. For France, Japan is seen as like the epitome of exoticism. Similar to themselves, the Japanese have a rich culture of noble tradition, things like castles, attire, and food. Likewise, Japan sort of shares the same mutual fascination and see France as like its European alternate universe twin. There's no two countries that like to poke fun of and borderline harass each other with the French as the UK and the USA. As historical rivals with the UK, I mean, they did have a hundred years war with them and the USA busting Damn. their chops about World War II all the time. All sides like <laughs> to satirize each other in cartoons and media all the time. Nonetheless, they are actually really close. The UK and France have been crossing borders and intermarrying for centuries. Commerce and student exchanges are high and the US was helped by the French during the Revolutionary War and they even gave the Statue of Liberty as a present. So fellow Americans, thank France for Lady Liberty, okay? It was a kind gesture. Okay. France's best friends though would probably be that. Germany and that Belgium. Tough. It's kind of funny because historically the only country that was consistently in a opponent of France was Germany. Ever since the split of Charlemagne's empire in three, most of Europe's history was driven by the overarching rivalry between variations of France and all variations of Germany, including the Holy Roman Empire, the Teutonic Order, Prussia, and of course, the Third Reich. But the plot twist was the creation of the EU. Following Robert Schumann's speech that states explicitly that for Europe to even hope to work, the millennia old rivalry between France and Germany has to be resolved for good. Ever since 1915, hmm. France and Germany have taken a lot of political inspiration off of each other. Heads of states have visited each other on numerous occasions, and both countries have been the biggest advocates for the survival of the Union. And Belgium is like their little brother that moved out and got a Dutch-speaking roommate and visits France every so often to raid their fridge and do their laundry. In conclusion, les Français sont connus pour être intrépides, turbulents, mais qui gardent quand même un certain charme. Ils ont parfois l'air des symboles, mais bon, essaye de vivre dans un pays envahi 24 heures sur 24, Damn 7 jours sur 7, par des hordes de touristes qui piétinent <sighs> vos jardins, massacrent votre gastronomie, 
l'économie et vous demandez de vous plaire au moindre de leurs désirs sans même vous dire un petit merci. Oh, France, faut le comprendre. Stay tuned. France's rich former little colony Gabon is coming up next. That is tough. That is tough. That is tough. France is a very, very rich country, like he said. That's beautiful. You guys let me know if you guys want to see more videos, or you guys tell me some more videos to check out about France, like about the food too, like about the wars and all. There's a lot of things that he said. Like, I'm just like, France, I have a lot of questions. Like, I'm going to be talking to y'all in the comments a lot about this one. But hey, I love you guys, man. Stay blessed, stay safe, stay lit. All tight. I think I drink too much, eh? I think I drink too much, eh? I think I drink too much. Will you roll me a blunt so I can't cool off? Eh?